Thank We're you. Going. So welcome to the July 27th uh, Asia Pacific uh, community call. Sean has shared the minutes in the chat several times. If you could click on the <laughs> link and add yourself to the attendees, that would be great. Um, all right, so I, there are yeah several things that I do want to talk about today, just from a Asia Pacific kind of chaos community perspective. So, and we've talked about this in the metrics model meeting as well, this first one, but context and keyword tags. This is just kind of an update for everybody who works on metrics models or metrics. Uh, we are going to be including context tags to all metrics and metrics models. And so you can click on that link. And these are the context tags. So contribution, contributor, community, so on and so forth. We talked about this in the common working group meeting as well. And I think we're pretty satisfied with the set of tags. If you do have changes, of course, <laughs> make suggestions, not a problem there. Or additions also, um, don't worry about that. Um, and so really what we do is if I take a look at this sheet for say the metrics model group, there are context tags and keyword tag columns now. Um, we've started adding these say for some of our metrics. Well, that's not a very exciting one to look at. It's just not filled in, but the columns are there. Yeah, here, here we go. So for the, the yeah. yeah. This is for common. So Kevin has gone through and added a couple context tags for the released metrics. And we, the, there's a, I think we said a maximum of two context tags for That's each metric. Correct. Yep, okay. Kevin was really trying to keep it at one. Yeah. But if, if two works, then that's okay. Or two are needed. Yep. And so the context tags provide just high level descriptions of metrics models or metrics. Then there are keyword tags, which will be more specific to the metrics themselves. And those can be determined by the particular working groups. So it's a very, if you don't, if it's not captured in the context tag or there's very specific things you want to draw out, say, for example, like dependencies, those would be keywords that you can add. Mm -hmm. um, so these will be applicable to metrics models. Uh, the intention here is to help search on the website. So right now, as you know, our metrics and really just our metrics right now are just a really long list and they're, it's pretty difficult to search. So the idea, not, yeah, go ahead. It's not organized according to how people might consume them, but rather to how we created them and which working groups. And so this is yep. an effort to make them more easily consumable. So now under this, under this approach, if say in common contributor location is tagged with the contributor context tag, and let's say something in risk is also tagged with the contributor um, context tag. Somebody could search for contributor and get <laughs> the variety of metrics that come from different working groups. So the idea is to, to assist in the search capability. Um, let's see. I, I have, I have a yeah. quick question. Um, so I'm assuming we'll need some kind of documentation around this and uh, like, or is that going to go into some existing documentation we have about how we develop metrics or where would this belong? Because I'm just thinking of Shoya and Ruth working on the community handbook. Like, I feel like this should be in there somewhere. Yeah, probably so. So maybe just this yeah. process that we have, not that Kevin and Matt were currently applying them, but yeah. <laughs> just that, that, you know, when you develop a new metric, it, when a working group develops a new metric or the metrics model uh, working group develops a new model, that one of the things they should do now is add a context tag or two and a keyword and any keywords that they believe are important for that model okay. metric. Okay, so, okay, got it. So we'll add that, Shoya, I'll like maybe put an issue in or something in our documentation. So we just, just so it doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Yep. Is that okay, Shoya? Okay. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Uh, we kind of discussed this tech, tech thing on the last web content meeting and uh, we okay. share uh, yeah, we share the document me and Ruth uh, is working on to Kevin and he will add some suggestions and guidance on that. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. And so for the current the current ones that are released, <coughs> Kevin and I are just going through and trying to make assignments that we think are appropriate. The metrics, the working groups can say that's a terrible idea and change it. But Kevin and I are trying to go through all 70 metrics 
to just assign them kind of on a first pass. Okay. Uh, what, uh, I have one question that uh, about the size of this uh, context text site. Are we allowed to change that or update it? Yes. Something. Okay. Yes. Great. And and also for the for the that k keywords. Uh, there's another one called keywords tags, right? No, so you you can you can make those up as you see fit. Okay. So, so right. are, are those keywords tags? Uh, you just mentioned it. It's uh, specific for the different working group. Uh, are they also supported for for easily search? They would. Yes, they would also be supported as part of the search. Great. And, great. Yep. And my advice is to the, all the working groups would be to create that if you create a set of keywords or tags that your working group uses, so that we don't end up with tag soup. Um, and maybe we keep a common list of the already used keywords for the, the other tags so that it's not, we don't end up with 10 synonyms for the same thing, for example, mm -hmm. okay. in the tag list. That's, that's advice. It's not a rule. It's a guideline, I hope. So just a quick example on the context tags. Um, for this influence metrics model that we talked about last week, we would first assign a tag or two that we, a context tag that we believe generally categorizes the influence metrics model, whatever that might be. We don't have to decide now, um, but you can see that a keyword tag might be open source program office. It might be community manager. Like it's the more specific things that are in the model or uh, in the in the metric itself that aren't necessarily captured by these very high level context tags. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So it's kind of like uh, we add a filter system to allow us to filter right. out the yeah. actual thing or metrics or group of metrics or my metrics models. Yep. We don't really have any ability to do that right now, and this is Great. yep Great. a way to do that. Cool. Thank you. I really like that. Cool. All right. Um, the next issue is repository management. So I'm just a, this is an encouragement for metrics model, the metrics model working group, which I know a lot of folks on this call are in. And um, any like common evolution risk, any of those, um, can you just also take a little bit of time in your next meeting or the next week or two to just kind of reflect on the organization of your repository? I know some groups do this pretty regularly and some maybe a little bit less so, but check for things like 404 links, um, checks for things like just weird folder structures and documents that are kind of embedded in places that nobody really knows what they are. Anyway, just go ahead and take a look at your repositories and just kind of clean them up um, as you see fit, so. Yeah, my, my observation is that the most frequent issue is that people change the, they, we create a landing page for all the metrics for working groups. And sometimes things move around and those links get broken. That seems to be the most common mode of failure. Yeah, that's true. I, I think um, we would uh, focus on two uh, repositories. First is uh, translations, the other is, uh, is metrics model, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Huge, a lot of work. <clears throat> It is, and the hope is, is that we can, instead of it widening over time, that we can bring bring it back together to to make our repositories nice and clean. So um, that that's it. That's just an encouragement on repository management. Um, this is see, this is a list that doesn't take too much time. Um, but this Google Summer <laughs> Code evals are due. They're due right away. Um, so the period for for submission is now. I went to the Google Summer of Code evaluation site, and this is what I understand to be the mentees, the list here, with the um, mentors kind of on that, that second point. So, Sean, you were on every single one of them. Um, yeah, that's that. Well, the reason is because, yes. Sean, I was like the person who signed us up for Google Summer of Code and somehow assigned me to everyone or I'm not exactly sure but I was like chaos community and their portal is always me yes 
Um, I, I just highlighted the people who I think I've been the primary mentor for. Uh, <clears throat> I, I was supposed to be the primary mentor for Mabel, but Yahui has, they've been, she's been working mostly with the Grimoire Lab um, metric model that Yahui is developing. And so okay. Yahui, I can talk to you and do that evaluation if, if you want, but I don't, sure. I don't uh, sure. But you're also welcome to do it yourself. I, I just, I don't feel like I have a good sense. Uh, sure, or, uh, for, for the Maple's evaluation, I can give you some my suggestions. Yeah. Uh, uh, to you, sure. Uh, for the Taiwanese, because as you know that every week we will have a weekly meeting. Yeah, and, and I'm uh, sorry. And up the progress. Yeah, the, the, pride, the, pride, the, the time of day has been tough for me because I'm a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So anyway, I will uh, I will update uh, the evaluation both for for Mabel and uh, Taiwei and for okay. Mabel evaluation, I will send send uh, send it to you. Okay. And maybe you can add more things about it. Okay. okay. Also, I'll highlight myself just to make sure that um, I have some responsibility for that. Sure. I also I, I also we can need to check with the vinyl that who, who yeah. also gave a lot of support on those two mentees. For sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I thought, <laughs> I, I guess we didn't, I didn't get you added to being Mabel's mentor, but um, I'll, I'll get, That's I'll fun. take feedback. That's one, super fun. Yeah, we have, um, I'll, I'll seek feedback from you and Venue. Uh, we, I've asked you, so I'll, I'll reach out to Venue today. They're, okay, they're do it. They're due Friday at like noon U.S. time. So, so Sean, can you with Taiwei and Mabel? Can you coordinate? With, you were yep. just saying, coordinate with Yahui and Venu, and then maybe Oops, you, you can you can just submit them. But yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, I'll submit them, but I'll make sure that I get the input from people who've been working more closely with Mabel. Okay, cool. So Sean, you are submitting these. Is that correct? Four, four. Uh, yes. <laughs> who's submitting Taiwei's? Oh, I'll submit. I can submit Taiways. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to submit Taiways, Yuhui? I mean, you would coordinate and figure out what to say. But in terms of just the submit button, I'm just wondering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I can take. I can take care of that. Sure. Okay. So, Sean, you have. You'll coordinate with. Venu and Yuhui to yep. kind of write up the evaluation for Taiwei and Mabel, you will submit them. And then Sean, yes. you're going to submit these three as well. Yep. So I'm going to submit five and then um, Elizabeth yep. will submit Enix. And I I have not been working closely with Enix. Yeah. That's been Kevin. I'll reach out to Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I think Kevin would be the best yeah. person for that. Okay. And I also put this in, um, it's in Slack as well. Okay. So if you could respond to that as well, yep. just so we know. Absolutely. It's in the, it's in the Google Summer of, Summer code, of code Mentor mentor, mentor Channel. So if you could just respond uh, that you will. You betcha. Yeah. OK. Um, thank you for that. Um, ChaosCon, I just want you to know that Red Hat, Google, and Vitergia have all provided sponsorship uh, for ChaosCon, which is Fantastic. So thank you to all of those organizations. Uh, this is ChaosCon Europe, which is happening September 12th uh, in Dublin, Ireland. Um, just one thought. I don't know. I was just going to put this out here because I just thought about it this morning. But we have three levels of sponsorship, bronze, silver, and gold. And um, people seem to gravitate towards a couple of them. And I was thinking, what if maybe in the future, we just do something like an organization providing five hundred dollars a year is recognized as a chaos sustainer. Um, dog. Yeah, I don't know who this dog is. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's not biting you. No, the shakers are here. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll just turn off my volume here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> a friendly Good dog boy. Um, yeah. You get something like five hundred dollars a year, and you're recognized as a chaos sustainer. And so this could this money could this is just a thought, and I'm just putting it out here to this group. We can talk about it obviously later, but um, 
a lot of this money would probably come in support of chaos con you know what i mean so like if red hat and google or Paturgia gave 500 dollars to support chaos con we'd actually recognize them throughout the year as a chaos sustainer we can recognize them on the website we can recognize them at chaos con and it's just or somebody could just give 500 dollars <coughs> not even for chaos con they just want to be a chaos sustainer see what i'm saying like it's it's yeah. less point in time kind of thing and it's just a way to to recognize people and organizations throughout the year that support chaos so instead of giving them momentary credit it's sort of a, a, a more of a sustained hey thank you so much yeah yeah and we can have like things that we obviously reach out to them like during chaos cons that would make it a like you know we could say <laughs> would you like to be a sustainer you know we have chaos con coming up you know what i mean oh. Yeah. I have one I have, I have one question about this sponsorship. So is this supposed to be like uh, uh, organizations actions like uh, from right hide Google, but maybe in the future from other companies? Yeah. But also yeah. does it support to be a personal action for for this sponsorship? Just a person. Like a, I mean as an individual sponsorship. You yeah, we would take Warren Buffett or Bill Gates money um, for sure. Okay. Yes. Or anybody, anybody that wants to be an individual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It could certainly be an individual. Maybe I can do something on in the next uh, Chaos China Summit together with Xiao Yang for such things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, actually it's supposed to be organizational. Uh, sponsor that uh, we recognize our companies as the whole organization, but we we will of course sure accept um, the uh, the sponsorship from uh, as as personal, and uh, we will also recognize it, the individual names. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and also uh, we are talking about the sponsorship. Uh, actually, for the for the metrics model, in the last meeting, we we discussed a little bit about the SaaS uh, platform um, yep. con contributed or by by the Gaty, and uh, and uh, in today's meeting together with Gaty uh, engineers and and the CTO, and we we are talking about uh, the domain name of this SaaS service, and we found that uh, the chaos dot org is available so so uh Getty just uh, uh, register this domain name and uh, and uh, discuss with me that um can we use uh, this domain name at the SAS domain name and uh, also contribute this domain name to to the chaos community yeah I mean, I've done something similar. I bought chaos.io for just okay. putting stuff up and it's, but it's not my property. It's the chaos community's property. So I, I think um, that's, I don't have a problem with that. I don't know how others feel. So how about the, you guys, Matt, you like it as a base and the... Yeah, so I mean, I guess, so Giddy registered chaos. <laughs> which is a, a nice property <laughs> yeah. particularly in relation to us because we are we, we are looking for the do domain name for this SaaS service yeah. and uh, and uh, we we have a lot of proposals but uh, we you know in, in some case uh, oc occasional case we found that the the chaos.org is not registered yet mm -hmm. so yeah. we quickly registered it and yeah. by by Getty. So the Getty CTO Dong Liu told uh, tell me that okay, they would like to contribute this domain name to the chaos. It looks like belong to the chaos community. Yeah. Yeah. So so, ahead, so, <clears throat> so uh, they would like to use this do domain name um, as a service as as a SaaS service that um, we discussed and. Um, and uh, as you know that because we all the metrics model deployed on this uh, SaaS platform, uh, the only entry port would come from 
uh, chaos metrics model. So I think it's suitable. So do you, I, as the, <coughs> do, are you thinking of deploying the metrics models in Grimoire Lab exclusively? Or are you thinking of also deploying things with Augur? Uh, currently, we are already care. trying out. <laughs> currently, we are try. We already try. Have been trying with the Groom Lab for more than three yeah. weeks. But as I mentioned, uh, Shen, uh, in the following, uh, going forward, I mean, we can deploy more uh, solutions <clears throat> like Augur into <clears throat> the into this SaaS service. Uh, we are totally open for that. Does the, have you put a, a log, I'm just curious if you put a login in front of Grimoire Lab so people can log in and <coughs> request repositories that they want to see the health statistics for? Yeah, but uh, I think uh, we, we have discussed it a little bit about it, but I think we can continue this discussion and um, to say, okay. is, is it possible to deploy your solution on this SaaS platform? So, so I, I think I have, I love, I love the idea and I have, uh, and I love the donation of, of chaos.org. Um, I have, I think I have a number of questions that like immediately come to my mind. And I'm not sure, maybe we could have another talk just in terms of like how how this would work. So if we had, like, for example, we would have chaos.org and we have Giddy involved providing a SaaS solution. Um, <coughs> like, is chaos.org providing metrics models like against the Giddy platform, and then how would we think about GitHub and perhaps uh, like Lab? No, like no, this no. Whole... I mentioned, I mentioned yeah. many times, not just the supported for Giddy, but okay. it's open for GitHub, GitLab, okay. GitLab, all the all, all the different kind of uh, code code okay. host platform, okay. and also not just the register to the code <clears throat> code host platform. It's open for the other other data sources like uh, Twitter. And okay. uh, 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 discourse like just the data sources supported already by background map and Augur. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> so would so chaos.org would kind of be a landing page by which the metrics yep. models are provided, and then from there you could choose to investigate say repositories on Giddy, or you could choose to, to investigate repositories on GitLab. And exactly. Then, okay. And for the for now, we, we just, uh, uh, you know, trying out the repository hosted on the GitHub and Giddy. We, okay. do, we, we, we haven't got time to try out with GitLab, but yeah, but sure. I mean, in the future, we could support it. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then uh like do we need do we need repository like software repositories like in <clears throat> to manage software that might be produced as all, part of this? all the all the metrics and the metrics model such solution should uh, uh should already exist in the chaos okay and, uh, and also for the SaaS this uh, website and this solution, they are prepared to open source it. Okay. Okay, so that, okay, so and where, you know, I mean, so this is, these are like the questions I have and maybe we could, and you're answering all of them. So um, like, do you know where, if they're gonna open source it, like where they would plan on, on hosting that? Would they wanna host it in the chaos org on GitHub? Good question. I can chat with the okay. guys. Okay. Yeah, it, <clears throat> if they're if they're donating the hosting services, I assume the computers will will be where Giddy is located, which I guess I don't know where that is. Uh, there. Uh, we 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 have a plan. So it, it, with the two with the two phases, the first phase mm -hmm. we will deploy all the service hosted in China, 
but uh, in in the second step, we will also uh, you know host um, provide support uh, the you mean the the servers deployed outside of China, maybe okay. in Hong Kong. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, when it when it comes to Augur, I can provide any kind of uh, help that's necessary in either location as I would for any open source project consumer. Um, my university will not, my university will go nuts if I log into a computer in China. So I can't ever <clears throat> log into a computer in China, but I can okay. like go to a web, I can go to a web page. And that's mm -hmm. just because of the geopolitical nature of university funding. There are five countries that we are not allowed to do exports to. Okay. And China is on that list. I'm sorry, it's my, it's my government. It's not me. Um, <clears throat> That's why, because we already have such plan, we okay. we, we are not uh, limited our users of of this platform, just the the people from China, but also the people from all over the world. So no, it's, and, and it's totally keep going. Yeah, it's totally fine. Like I can give email support, issue support, talk to you. I just like I can't physically touch. A computer in China at the at the sysadmin login level, like I do with other Augur instances, um, <clears throat> but web pages those are fine. If yeah, I can if they could be accessed, you know, nobody knows where they are if they're on the internet. <clears throat> so, Yuhui, do you have uh, documentation like strategy documentation or kind of logistics documentation that we could start? Sharing. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not not right now, but uh, I'm preparing for that. I I I remember already gave this promise last time. But <laughs> I, will give I, wasn't, it. I wasn't bugging you again. But, yeah. <laughs> but I will promise. But I promise I will share it with you guys sooner or later. Because okay. I think you would, like I said, you're answering all all of the questions. So this is great, and I just I think it would be cool if I could help like in terms of like documenting this out and kind of mapping out what this would look like and then thinking about um community development as well for su support of of such things and you know kind of all the the extra open source things that go yeah. around that as well um, i'm trying to prepare while it it uh, during the weekend and uh, and uh, we can discuss it discuss it together in the next community meeting maybe okay yeah. that sounds good and just share it with me when you're ready and sean and elizabeth sure, sure. just share it when you're ready <coughs> yeah absolutely and that would be cool okay great well that took us down here um great thank you for that and so so actually then i mean we may want to think i think this question about sustainer kind of brought us down here as chaos.org and so oh, yeah. I think, you know, maybe it's not just money, but it could be um, in kind. I, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. There are a variety of ways that an organization yeah. could become a sustainer. So um, you're right. I haven't thought past this, this list. Here. I think that's a really good idea. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, certainly any organization offering server support would be welcome well right and then i immediately think of like honestly the the linux foundation <laughs> the amount of in in kind support that they provide oh yeah um as well okay yeah absolutely um, okay cool thank you thank you for that um so i actually that is the updates on the software as a service efforts was there anything else you wanted to say about that yahoo or is, are you are you good no no all, right. All good. Okay. Um, I did just want to talk just a little bit about metrics models again. Sean, I'm going to ask you what the status of the welcomingness metrics model is, and if you could just organize that towards yep. the structure that we have. Yep. I've assigned a developer to, to do that. So okay. I would, in the next week or two, that should be taken care of. Okay. <clears throat> I think you have a lot of the parts there. I think it's just getting yeah. into the folder structure. That I, 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 the only thing that I wasn't able to do quickly myself is get the JSON files stored okay. exactly as they need to be. And it's like, it's not hard. It's just, I didn't want to spend three hours 
de- debugging it myself. I wanted to put a developer on it. Okay, no problem. <laughs> um, just so just to ping on that one. Um, I just just wanted to just not that we have to talk about them here, but just draw forward the metrics models that came forward in the last metrics model meeting. So thank you. We had a, a big uh, conversation. I think it was about this one, wasn't it, Shoya? The influence one. It was a really detailed conversation. Really, really quite interesting. So um, thank you for that. Um, we are working on the uh, e-charts. Uh, we are using e-chart as the displaying um, the visualization um, to. Um, so hopefully we can demonstrate some demos on the next meeting because uh, it might be a bit hard to understand look, just looking at these st- st- static pictures. Right. OK, so that'd be, that'd be cool. I can put that on the next metrics model like agenda. I'd love to see okay. that. Um, can Frank make it as well, do you think? Yeah. OK. Um, I think, yeah, we can. Okay. We can. That'd be cool. Okay, cool. Thank you for that, Shaya. Um, I, just, uh, I just lost my connection. You're back. I hear you. Okay. Uh, for the for the community service and support and code quality, we have been running on more than like <clears throat> more than one thousand projects on that and with Gitigas and also. Uh, that repos, including the repo deployed, uh, sorry, posted on the GitHub already. So okay. later, maybe the next two weeks, we'll uh, give the real world data and uh, analysis to metrics models. And also, uh, because currently we are working on the <coughs> developer relationship, uh, you know, um, related max model, we will contribute more on those. Uh, on Wait, did you say there was a new metrics model developer relationship? Lost of them. Okay. Um, if you could add those maybe to the metrics model agenda. Sure, yeah, I will. Okay, that'd be cool. Thank Before you. For the next metrics model team. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, oh, we have a somebody's yeah. typing. Who's, who's typing? I'm typing. That's me. <clears throat> I. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um. Okay, so I, I'm I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit about the Asia Pacific logo. So um, the last web content meeting. Uh, I already shared the news with Ruth um, because we discussed the logo design of Chaos Africa and Asia Pacific, and I love the idea of using the map outline to represent local communities. So I shared this preview to some of the local community members. However, I received a strong feedback concerning that um, the territory territorial issues is kind of a bit sensitive topic in China. So we might want to avoid any element regarding the map because it, it might to it, it might lead to some um, arguments about the around the ter- territory yeah problems. Okay. That's completely fair. So maybe the suggestion, no suggestion on Chaos Africa, <clears throat> perhaps just remove the map for Chaos Asia. Yeah, okay. I. What it? Yes, I already just, shared this with Ruth, um, and he, he, he shared this with the designer, and uh, uh, we might see the updates of the logo on the next web content meeting. And um, I feel sorry for this logo because I really loved that, and it's really not about the design because I think it looks amazing, but um, it's just there are always some, this politic factors lingering around. Well, thank yeah. you for thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah and actually, that's, that's a great I, point. I, what what I'm what I'm wondering is if is there is there any other like abstract image that we could use that would sort of represent Asia in some way that's not a map? 
Yeah, I was kind of thinking about that, but I don't have anything representative to to sh to show the whole Asia Pacific area. I don't have that kind of element on mind. So a temporary solution might just use characters. If um, one of the things that when we talk about Asia Pacific, one of the ways we neutralize the political factors in the US is we include Australia and New Zealand on the map. And then it becomes unambiguous that Asia Pacific is just a kind of a vague, ambiguously defined region. And the, the country, you know, so that just try to ambiguate, I guess, which countries are in it. Because, you know, how do you draw those lines? It, it's, North America is pretty easy. <laughs> But I think I think Asia with the land boundaries, it's a little bit more difficult to say where does Asia end and I mean really it would include Russia, I believe. <clears throat> Technically, if I'm looking at continents. So it does sound like there's a was did I hear you right too, Shoya? The the designer that Ruth is working with is gonna come back with a few suggestions. Oh uh, yeah, he um, okay. yeah he he might share uh the updated logo on the next web content meeting. Okay, that sounds great. All right, cool. Um, Shoya, thank you very much for for sharing that and bringing the feedback here. Much appreciated. Yeah. Yeah, we also saw that uh, actually our feedback on the on the contribution from Xiaoya be very friendly about this. We just have a little bit of concern about these territories um, and map things. It's kinda of, it's kind of sensitive in China. So we have to avoid such discussion around around this area. Point point but, um, but, yeah. and also uh, I, I told Xiaoya that uh, if if you need any support design things uh, from my company uh, my organization could provide some uh, support on that yeah um, i think Ye Hui, uh, is he, he means that huawei have uh, resources on the designers so if uh, we can also discuss this with ruth that if um um, the designer volunteer uh, needs some support. Maybe um, there are some resources from Huawei to support. Okay, that sounds great. Um, thanks, Yuhui, for that offer. Thanks, Shoya. I was just doing a bit of googling, and I dropped a link in the in the chat. Um, I wonder if we could use like outlines of animals that are native to Asia, um, not necessarily these. But I found I found this logo, and so yeah. like, that's going to be not um, not controversial, I wouldn't think. Um, so that's that's an idea, maybe. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, um, I like that. For example, panda could be the the animal for China, and. Um, uh, for Russia, there has bear, and uh, for India, there has elephant. Elephants, and yeah, I think that's a good, a good direction that we can consider. Okay. Could you, Shoya? Could you share that with Ruth? And yeah, sure. Maxwell, I think he's the other people who's doing the, the okay. design work. All right. Cool. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Great. Uh. Let's see, Sean, did you have any, you were typing some stuff in here. Oh, yeah, I just, um, under the hire a data scientist uh, piece, I just wanted to mention, there's a project that Red Hat is leading, which is a sub project of a, of a larger open source project called San Diego. And they're building, uh, there's a alpha version of a dashboard that they're building with uh, what's called, actually a, a project called Dash slash Plotly. And um, so they're building out a bunch of things that are ultimately gonna look a lot like metric models, just with a different technology uh, back-ended by Augur. And uh, I just, but they have a pretty decent sized team of data scientists who are creating it. And I just wanted to 
make make a, a note of that project in the in the context of the data scientist question. Right. That they are they're working with chaos metrics, they're working with Augur, and they're building a new dashboard kind of a thing. And uh, one of the things you'll see here is one of the things we're working on right now is on the back end for some reason. Um, actually, I know the we know the reason, which is that they uh, the front end is hosted on an Amazon server somewhere in Oregon and the database is in North Carolina. And so there's just a lot of data getting marshaled between the servers. That's why it's a little slow right now. <clears throat> and it's obviously alpha-ish. But there's over 10,000 repositories that you, and organizations you can search on in that list there. I don't think there's anything under CICD yet, but there's a there's some stuff under chaos. Long time it's uh, it has been running on. Say it again. Takes a long time to load. I mean, how long uh, this this service has been running on? Oh, this is this page has been up for less than a month. Um, okay. It's been a it's been a nas it's been a nascent project probably for eight months or so but it's taken a long time to ramp up and now it's now it's really getting ramped up so that's why i'm, I'm bringing it to us because it, it it definitely appears to be a going concern and they're they're definitely working with the products that chaos is producing uh, so the back end is something called Diago, right i'm sorry i didn't quite catch that I mean, what's the background of this service? It's called Sinago. What's the back end for the service? Is it oh, Augur? The, else? Yeah, the back end is the back end is Augur right now. Yep. Okay. But there's nothing that would prevent uh, them from accessing Grimoire Lab data. The front end is completely uh, in the, you know, you can build a graph off of any data store. <clears throat> I mean, that's really cool. Yeah. What, does what, I like, what I like, what I like about it is it allows windowing. Like you can scroll and select those window times down there, and it pretty dynamically, like updates things. So like that that gray window, where there's a, you can slide the time window that you're looking at. Um, and so you could, yeah, so you can see things for different time. Obviously, there's a scrunching problem, but <clears throat> yeah. So that's, you know, in terms of things that I've seen that have been done with chaos metrics, uh, that particular feature I, I think is really desirable. Okay, so my. I'm, I... that, this is really the whole, the only point here is that there's data scientists working on this that that's the discipline that's uh driving this effort right now and uh there was a mention of data scientists so i thought i'd bring this up yeah because there seems to be a, a a fairly recent like six months in the chaos project kind of drive towards you know how we've always kind of been agnostic <laughs> on metrics yeah yeah like kind of not fully saying this is perfect or this is not not great but like kind of a move towards some sort of recommendations or what we've been seeing kind of across yeah. a, a comparable set of projects and I'm just okay well and i think i think on this you know i think dawn has been doing that at vmware like actually applying chaos metrics but uh also the the indicators that vmware considers to be you know, red, yellow, green, not not necessarily in that language, but cer certainly the dashboards that you produced on those are not unbiased, right? You're you're creating something that sends them a message or signal to your organization. Yeah, we we sort of categorize them as um, whether or not it looks healthy or whether or not it might be at risk. Um, yeah. with the caveat that they should be interpreting it themselves because just because it hit an arbitrary threshold that means that <laughs> it 
the graph thinks it. it's at risk does not necessarily mean <laughs> that a project is indeed at risk. Right. So I put yeah. I put all these all these caveats around it. And then the other thing I actually look at too that I've added to the graphs is um trend data. So so yes, this is at risk, but it's trending in a positive direction. So mm -hmm. maybe don't worry too much about it or it's right. not at risk, but it's trending in a negative direction. So maybe you should think about, you know, whether or not that the the project is that that metric is going in the wrong direction. So yeah, I do I do have some definite opinions around those. Yeah, but uh, so has, has any indicator to tell us trend of this chart going well or, or going worse? You were breaking up, Yahui. It was hard to hear you. Oh, sorry. So I mean, does it? Does this chart have any indicator to tell us that this trend is become, it's becoming worse or become wild? Does this does this chart have any data that tells us kind of what you were talking about at the end there, Don? Like the trend? So yeah. Is this telling us that this is <clears throat> trending well or this is trending poorly? Sean, that's kind of for you. My my, my so that's not explicitly applied. And I think it's less direct than some of the work that Don is doing in, in terms of providing those possible indications. But uh, cert th this, this is not giving a clear signal. You do have to interpret it. But I think it's, I, I do think this is the kind of work that is trending in the direction that people will, whether we want them to or not, whether the chaos takes a position or not, people will start to interpret this data as, you know, good or not good. All right, folks, we are at risk. We are at the end of time, a little bit over time. It's good to see everybody. Till the next time. Thank you so much for the right. conversation. Yeah, thanks, Bye. everyone. See you next Bye. week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next time.